We just wanted to take a couple minutes as a family to share with you some of the things that God's been teaching us and some of the ways he's been stretching us during these crazy and unprecedented times of the coronavirus and all the quarantine and isolation. Uh, and a special thanks to Pastor Luke for uh, prompting us to think about this as a family. And even though it's probably taken us uh, 20 takes to get this down. <laughs> um, probably 30. It's, it's really been good to, to think about how the Lord's been um, using this to stretch and grow our faith. So who wants to start first? All right, go ahead, Ian. I think what's been the biggest change in my life is that I was, I rely on, just in general, I rely more on doctors and technology and all that stuff without really noticing. And in times like these where doctors and technology can't stop this, it's everybody feels inclined to pray to God. But we should really do that all the time, whether it's good, whether life is good and everything seems to be going our way or life is horrible and everything seems to be spiraling out of control. People can only help us to a certain extent. They can't, they can't help us spiritually like God can. God is the only thing we can trust in in these uncertain times where doctors and nurses can't stop, doctors and nurses can't stop this. And sometimes our minds make these imaginary force fields and so we think, we think we're safe, but when stuff like this occurs, then those imaginary force fields just break and everything spirals out of control. And we gotta trust in God, God to be our force field, our shield, our protection, our wall, our fort, our castle mm -hmm. in times of need like this. Mm -hmm. And in also in good times, in plentiful times, and also in bad and starving times. We should trust him no matter what, and this experience has taught me that we should trust Jesus even when things are looking up, because when things are looking down and nothing, people can't help us, that's when people feel more inclined to pray to God, but we should pray to him always, no matter what type of situation we're in. Thanks, Ian. Can I say something Let's, All right, Nark. Um, I feel safe, even though there's coronavirus here, and even if I do get it, then I still will trust in Jesus, because he knows what he's doing, and I know what he's, I know what God's doing, and he's protecting me, no matter if I'm really sick, or if I have to go into the hospital, or if it's really a big emergency. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad because God's been protecting me from the coronavirus, mm -hmm. and He's just the most powerful thing. You can't even you can't even think of, of it. You can't even imagine it. He's so powerful. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mary. Who else? When it's God's been teaching Emily? Um, along those lines of what Ian and Nora said, um, you know, we tend to think that we're really safe and we forget how fragile we are and how quickly things can really spiral out of control. And um, along the lines of what Nora just said, of really no matter what happens, um, God has us. We are safe in His hands. Um, sounds a little cliche, but uh, we truly are safe in his hands, the safest place for us to be is inside of his will. And knowing that, it really, um, come what may, under any circumstances, we have the Lord. And we had a real practical application of that because we were forced to go into some clinics and even the hospital while, even, uh, I think during our second week of quarantine, when things still seemed pretty ominous and threatening, uh, we were trying to be really careful and not leave the house for really anything and Ian broke his arm so we had to go in and get things taken care of and 
uh, and we hardly ever go to the hospital or yeah, even so. to the doctor's office. So. Yeah, so we were kind of forced out of our own comfort zone, out of our own little uh, cardboard fortress, so to speak, spiritually speaking. And um, the Lord showed us that he is our shelter and we can shelter in place, so to speak. But he's our true shelter and, and we had to apply that very quickly. Um, and I think that's really what impacted me during this time. I'll just uh, briefly add uh, some just personal um, areas of growth for me have definitely been just acknowledging and um, realizing how sweet family time is and getting to do that more, mm -hmm. which is always a struggle for me because I'm working constantly and always have lots of coals in the fire and different projects going. So. And the timing too with the baby and not having to travel as much as you would normally. Yeah, everything timed time. out really well, um, and it's been really helping me to kind of focus and helping us to, to think about how we spend our time, and uh, with our schedule being pruned so much with everything being canceled, it's just been nice to get back to the basics and really focus on spending time together as a family, spending time together with God, and... Um, uh, just a practical thing, I've started exercising <laughs> almost daily during this um, quarantine time, which has always been a goal of mine uh, ever since I started gaining weight, you know, uh, rounding my 30s. Um, and I just was never able to really do it uh, faithfully, but I've uh, been able to stick with it, been able to carve out that time, and it's really uh, helped me not just physically uh, but you know spiritually as well to take that time to be alone and to be thinking and praying uh, listening to audio Bible and that kind of thing so uh, lots of lots of good practical uh, benefits like that and then just being together um, out here as a family we're at my uh, my in-laws land Emily's parents cabin out in the woods and seeing the beauty of God's creation in the spring, getting to spend more time out here. We've been out, out here pretty much all of May and hopefully uh, a lot of June, we'll be able to stay out, out here as well. And that's been really healing and really um, re-energizing you know, for our family and getting to, to grow and see the, the life of this little newborn. This is Edith, for those of you who haven't met her yet. And so it's really been been a blessing to be able to spend so much time as a, as a family together out here. So those are some of our takeaways and um, hope that the Lord is teaching you lots of uh, things and stretching and growing your faith as well.